The following video is not intended to mock the speaker, but has accuracy of the content and quality of articulating the subject as its goals. Whoso loveth correction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Proverbs 12, 1. Preacher in this video is paid by them who listen to his studies. He who pays the piper calls the tune. His flock has all the rights to demand quality of service. In today's message titled Spiritual Parasites, Hannity Melnichuk talks about different habits and practices that can destroy a Christian experience. To stress his point, he draws a lesson from nature and tells the story of the Cordyceps killer fungus, otherwise known as zombie fungus, that disorients and eventually kills its host. Hannity then continues and asks the following question to which he himself gives an emphatic answer. Can other ants help the infected one? A question. No. And that is true in the natural world. The ants afflicted by the fungus, and discovered by the other workers, are quickly taken away and dumped far away from the colony. Hannity, were you trying to draw a parallel between colony of ants and Christian congregation? Did you mean to teach your listeners a lesson that those members of the congregation, who are weak, and who were struck by a spiritual disease, must be put outside the church? In answer to your question about infected ants, you turn to the Bible and quote Jeremiah 13, 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil? No. Hannity, it doesn't look like you are being consistent in your thought process. You ask the question about whether the healthy ants can help the infected ones, but the verse in Jeremiah says about the inability of sinful humans to help themselves change their own sinful nature. Or, you may totally be consistent here and you believe in extreme measures in dealing with spiritually bruised church members. Did you mean to say that we are not our brother's keeper? Do you believe the church should abide by the law of the jungle? Or do you believe the church should follow her gracious Lord and show mercy to the afflicted and needy? Please consider these statements from the pen of inspiration. Next point of your study was destructive parasitical habits. Taking a closer look at the background picture of the slide you've shown here, we see a boy attentively watching TV. Do you believe that watching TV is inherently wrong? Or did you want to show your brethren that you are upholding the general conference resolution that forbids watching TV? Is it safe to say that if your daughters watch cartoons on iPad or computer, then it would not be considered a destructive habit? Next on your list of spiritual parasites was pride. We think you did a great job when you passionately gave all glory to God. It not, it's not that you brought yourself here. God was so merciful and so strong working on you, brought you here. So what credit you deserve now? We admire your humbleness in that you have just recognized that God had to work strong using your vernacular in order to bring people to church and hear you preach that morning. Good, Gennady. Indeed. However, did you ever think how God brings people to Christ and how Christ brings people to the Father? If God does everything, what do people must do when they turn to Christian faith? And if people make their choice to follow Jesus, can they take at least a little glory for themselves for making that right choice? We would love to hear you preach on this subject. And the most outstanding part of your study was when you shed new light upon the redemptive mission of our Lord. To all of our astonishment, you said that Christ did not die for our sins. Now, that is a new theology that would make angry the Pope himself. Because Jesus really died. But people are not going further. For what we, he died? He didn't die for our sins. Bible doesn't teach that way that he died for our sins. No, Signore. Eh? Signore non ci scarta mai.